Ah. This is a Rubik's Cube. A lot of people have challenged themselves to figure out how to learn this in as fast a time as possible. And most notably on YouTube, Michelle Carr learned how to solve one of these in less than 60 seconds, given only one week of training. I personally have a little bit of experience with a cube. I mean, I know how to do some things, but I don't remember how to solve it entirely. And also, I only ever learned the beginner method. So I want to challenge myself to do something similar to learning a Rubik's Cube in one week, but I feel like I need to challenge myself and go a little bit above and beyond. So that is why I am only going to be using one hand. I'm going to be using my right hand because, well, I'm right-handed. Even though in my keyboard video I used my left hand, that was mostly due because I had to use the shift and caps lock buttons, and those are on the left side of the keyboard. But this is a beast I'm going to tackle with my right hand. So let us begin. One week, 60 seconds, starting now. So I think a great place to start would be to just do a diagnostic test. I'll solve this right now with one hand and see how fast I can do it. Most of the problem has less to do with my technique and more to do with the fact that I just don't know how to solve the third layer. As soon as I learn how to solve the third layer, I think that 90% of my problems will go away, and then it's a matter of working on my one-handed techniques. So I will be learning the CFOP method in order to maximize my efficiency. From there, I'll focus on actually refining my technique. So my plan right now is to learn F2L with two hands, then master it with one hand, then learn the third layer with two hands, and then master everything with one hand. Okay, so here's a problem. I absolutely cannot speed solve with this cube. It is way too rigid and it is just not good enough for the standards of today's speed solving. However, I knew that going into this, so I decided to make a healthy investment and I bought another cube. This cube is extremely hard to work with. You can already hear from just how much noise it makes. that it's not very loose and it's kind of extremely rigid. You can't have it off by too much or else it just doesn't turn properly. And that's especially really hard when I'm trying to do things with my one hand because, you know, my pinky's not that strong. It can't push things unless they're perfectly aligned. This cube allows you to turn even when it's off by 45 degrees, like so. And it's a lot easier to turn, especially when I'm using my pinky. It's not as difficult and it's not as rigid. Another thing is that it has magnets in it. So whereas this cube would naturally misalign and you have to perfectly align it manually, this one relatively is easy to align. It naturally snaps into place, which is absolutely perfect. So I realize I can't really bring you through the entire week of things that I've been learning, but I do want you to know a little bit more about the actual mechanics of solving with one hand. When you're solving a cube with two hands, you can generally perform most rotations pretty easily and you can solve any side that you want to. But when you're solving with only one hand, you're meant to grip these four cubes with your thumb and just hold the back kind of like this and most of your turns are going to be the top piece with your index finger, like so, or this side piece with your pinky finger, like so. However, you can always rotate the cube like so in order to change which sides you're working with, but certain rotations are harder than others. Another thing about solving with one hand is oftentimes you'll use the table to help stabilize some of your movements. So for example, Without having a hand to stabilize the left side of the cube, you can't actually perform middle turns. However, you can do it when you press your cube down against the table and using that force, it stabilizes the side like so.
My pinky did kind of hurt at the beginning because of all of the movements that I was doing with it that I wasn't used to, as well as my index finger over here had a lot of pain for a couple of hours. But now that that's gone, I feel like my hand is used to this now, so I'm able to do a lot more. Before I end the video, I just want to say that finding entertaining content on YouTube is often as confusing as this puzzle. So, subscribing to me will solve all of your problems. Go subscribe.